back, it's Christina again with the Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw a long-tailed weasel. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop, so let's get arting. Alright, so here's the long-tailed weasel. Um, I, I debated a lot on what um, colors to draw him. So they have, if, especially in the north, they have, you know, a winter coat and then a summer coat. And then, of course, in spring and fall, they kind of have the in-between as over the course of a few weeks, they change from their summer coat to the winter coat. So winter coat, they're all white, and that's what I was originally going to do. Summer coat is, uh, they're brown with like a white tummy. So I've decided to kind of do an in-between. Um, I think that might look interesting. We'll see how it goes. Um, we're going to start with the brown um, and then build in the white. Like any animal, right, we're going to do uh, a stroke, stroke, and then one in between. So we're going to build it up in the direction the fur is going, right, so as it comes to the side, we're, we're going to rotate it over. And just uh, build that up. Should be pretty quick, even though we're changing for color. Um, and if we need to, we can always uh, change exactly how uh, the fur color looks. So, um, you know, if we need to do that, it'll be relatively easy to do. So we're just building it up. And then as you build it over, Right? See how we're changing direction as the fur color comes. I think the white should really highlight along the edge here. Um, as we're coming off the nose, something I've learned is to come straight off. Don't angle it, right? The inclination, I think, is to angle it. That's how I used to do it. But then I would kind of accidentally get myself into a corner. Um, and so, you know, just coming straight off and then you can angle it at the edges, but otherwise you end up with some conflicts um, because the tendency of angling off, you know, if you angle it off and then you're angling it off and now I'm going the wrong direction and so I have to fix it. So um, coming straight off, you're gonna go in that direction anyway. Um, and so then the same thing on this side. Straight off the nose. And we're drawing the fur length about the size of the fur in relation to how we've drawn the animal. Um, in the winter time, their fur is longer, so the white potentially is a little longer here. Uh, in summer, obviously, their coats are shorter, their fur is shorter. Um, so, you know, just sort of things to consider as you're drawing. It's okay to have some wobble in a stroke. Um, as you do, you know, it's, it's not going to be perfect and fur wouldn't be. So that's, you know, totally realistic. So we come over to the eye. We need to start angling this down, right? So we start coming over here angle that down, but it's going to come straight to this inside section of the eye. That's how you also avoid line conflicts. If you angle this right to the eye, you can angle this up above it and down below it. So we have kind of a little bit of a hump where the eye is here before it goes kind of into a lower a lower section. And then as you come off the eye, right, you're you're gonna be pulling this straight back too. around the eye being a little bit more careful 
I know I mentioned this before, I've mentioned this in a lot of drawings, and typically there's like a little swoop over the eye, right? Because you have this bulge, and there's, you can kind of, you can really see it, so creating that bulge as the hair comes up and then off the, that swoop. We all have it because our eyes are a ball in our heads, um, but it's more pronounced in some animals than others, and theirs it was pretty pronounced. But still, you know, being careful on that back side. And then doing the same thing over here. You look kind of mad when you first <laughs> when you first do it. And then you kind of right like you swoop it and then you angle it out because the fur doesn't follow the eye all the way around. And then down here just like the other Right, you have kind of this hump. That then, you know, sort of straightens out, flattens out. And then once you get above the eye, the hair kind of, uh, Right, there's no there's no bulge really on it anymore. So the hair's gonna kinda naturally go straight up, but you're gonna aim towards the ears here. Um, as you get towards the middle, it starts straightening up, right? So this line would be straight up and down. And then just like we did before, right, as you come off, you angle it. It's okay if you know you ram off the edge. That's not, you know, especially on long-haired animals, but um, even on short ones, a perfect edge is uh, unrealistic <laughs> in animals. We have kind of the ear. Ears typically have shorter hair, much like the, the nose, right? Right on here, it's typically the shortest hair in an animal. Ears being the next. And then we're going to this middle point. This is also to avoid line conflicts. Middle point, and then we go the other direction. And then we run into kind of this white fur, so it'll make a good, you know, differentiation here. Thing for here, right? We have kind of this longer hair going into shorter hair. And then re-angling it. Um, and then we're just going to kind of fill in the hair in the ear itself. It's just kind of a recess. So we can make it a bit more of a recess by spreading out our strokes as we come to that line there. You can decide if that works or it doesn't. Alright, so edges will have fill in a little bit more. And then as we get towards that center, allowing the strokes to sparse out. Looks uh Looks kind of funny. 
All right. So now for the white. Um, not much with the white. We have the chin. It's not much room there before it's taken over by the cheeks. And we have, you know, sides of the face here, continuing these lines. They're coming straight to the edge. Now there's a gap here where the muzzle kind of blocks. But otherwise, making sure that these white strokes are going in between the brown and following it over. And as we come up to the ear, some of this um, fur gets really long. Following this up, you can see I'm aiming going, oh, was it bad? Well, I could probably leave it. And I'm aiming it between uh, those other lines. And then we have the longer fur. Thing up the middle, making sure all these lines match up with each other. Not hard to do. And if it's okay, there's some overlap outside of the pre designated color. Typically, uh, typically, you want kind of an overlapping of colors. So that's what we got so far. I think it might turn out to be pretty cute. So um, now we're going to sketch in the nose, and then we'll work on the shadows and highlights. Nose, same thing, except there's no real distance to worry about. Their noses are kind of shaped almost like a cat. And you have the nostril here, so looping that down, flaring it back out just a little bit as it kind of swoops down. You have that kind of flare happening on the bottom of that nose. You have a dip here. Right, and up top we angle, angle out just that little bit. A good, uh, a good start so far. Uh, they also have a little bit of like black around their eyes. It's not much, but I am gonna go ahead and fill that in. Again, being careful around the eye. Not really fur. I think it's skin. For black, I always use this like medium gray. I don't typically like drawing back, but if it's a little bit like this, it's usually fine. Okay. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do is come down here and indicate what color I chose. I don't wanna take all that off. Or we're gonna take it off after I change my color back. All right. Um, okay, so I like taking a look at an image, you know, without the, the drawing on it, because it can give me an idea how something's looking. I'm going to change this edge just a little bit, partly because this one pushes down further, and I want to make sure he's nice and somewhat even, partly because it looked a little funny. Yeah, I think that that looks better. Okay. 
Now on to highlights and shadows. Um, I'm going to have the light source come in from above and to the right. Um, like always, that means it's above and in front of, right? So the light source is effectively behind us, the person drawing it. I'm not going to do it from behind. I'm not going to do it, do it from next to, because those um, won't do the best job of illuminating my subject. From behind, what you would get is the edges being in highlight. Um, and from the side, you would have this edge in highlight and like a potentially extreme highlight coming this way, but therefore an extreme shadow on this side. So with this, you know, all edges will be in shadow, but, you know, you're looking at a subject whose illumination is, is more along the lines of like that. So you get more, um, more bang for your buck, and essentially. Uh, you want your subject to show up nicely, so choosing a light source um, can be important to help with that. Alright, so we're going to come in here and start with the highlights. That's full pin pressure. Keeping the stroke links, you know, the same as they were when we first drew it. Following the lines we've already done, right? We've already decided what direction all this goes. Um, which makes it a little easier in this step. We don't have to worry about it. We just have to figure out and worry about where our highlights and shadows are going to be. Um, down in here, I'm going to do some shadowing. So for shadowing, I basically back off my pin pressure. Right, I'm not putting nearly as much. Sort of very lightly filling this out. And again, all edges are in shadow, so... having this come up because it kind of is an edge. And you can see the difference, right? How much darker this looks in comparison to this. It's the same color, it's just now I'm not putting a lot of pin pressure. And then we're going to kind of run that back in. Okay. And so then we're going to have this, and we need to make sure that they, they play nicely together in effect, right? Like, I'm going to put this moderate pin pressure building in to bridge the gap so there's not a jarring transition from highlight to shadow. Otherwise, it'll look, it'll look funny. Backing off my pin pressure as I run into the shadow, even as I get close to it. I also gave a little bit of shadowing right under the nostril here. I'm just going to fix that up a bit. Right, because you have the nose kind of coming down, so presumably. There'd be some shadow there too. Now, same thing here. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a runway, which I do sometimes. It's a lot easier to add um, to brighten it, to add highlight, than it is to take away highlight. So I'm mindful of that. Um, and I try not to over highlight something. It's better if I accidentally do it the other way, add too many shadows, because then I just need to add more lines, right? And then just, you know, fixing the edge, pushing that highlight in, but now I have a little bit more control because I don't have to put full pin pressure in areas where I've already added lines. I just have to add more lines. It works the same way. Adding more lines, adding more pin pressure, it's going to highlight it the same way.
All right, and then all of this is going to be highlight. This is going to loop over. And then as we bring it across his face, there's going to be a point at which it goes into shadow on the backside too. Not for a while. All this probably highlight. Right under the eye is some shadowing, right? Because the eye is rounding down and in. Whereas underneath, typically there's highlighting for the opposite reason. It's coming back out, so this was caps the light, whereas this goes into shadow. Not much. And then it would kick into highlight as it comes underneath. Now, there's also, because, you know, there's this bulge in our eyes, there's also sometimes just this little bit of shadowing against the bulge, especially with the light source coming from the right. Not much. Gonna give it more than it needs before I fill the rest in with highlight. Right, and then back to that full pin pressure. Just, you know, ram it into the light. Now we'll want to taper this in. You can kind of see it's not very well tapered yet, so. That's why I gave myself a bigger runway. We'll just feather that in. leaving a bit of shadow, but giving just enough indication that there's a dip. And then all of this is highlight. Could do a little bit of shadowing under where that bulge is in his eye, but it's not horribly important. Just did a little bit, but. And the thing I'm gonna do is brighten up this edge where his mouth had come up. Temper that out a bit, even though it's, it's kind of an edge. It looks a little awkward the way it currently is. Nice and easy to fix though. All right. Doing good so far. Now is the ear, and because of the direction of the light source, the ear is probably gonna be blocking just a little bit. Right, like it juts all the way down here, so up in here. Not only are all edges in shadow, but the ear itself is probably doing maybe up in right through here. And then, you know, closing that distance is the ear's influence would be tapering away. I still have shadow on top of the head but not as deep as way down here. And um, <clears throat> I know I pull back a lot, but that really helps, you know, if you're trying to sort out details of what's what, how things are looking, pulling back is <laughs> really the easiest way to make sure everything's looking right. Otherwise you have kind of narrow vision on exactly what you're doing and focusing on. Slightly 
taking this over. Sometimes I'll do all the shadows before I commit to some areas that are highlights. And on the back side, you know, as we get over here, I tend to add shadows and add in the highlights later. Just find it easier to control exactly where the highlight versus the shadow will cut off. Just sort of lightly filling this in, running it into the ear on this side, but making sure it's a little straighter than what I did. They can have a dip. A lot of rodents will have this little dip in their heads, so that's perfectly, uh, perfectly normal. And then just bring that full pit of pressure back. Continue bringing it over. Foreheads have more um, highlight uh, on an animal, typically, because it's the closest to the light source, depending on where your light source is. But if you've done a light source from above, like I have, then the forehead's going to have the most highlight, partly because of its proximity um, and partly because of how it's shaped, right? There's nothing to, typically, there's nothing on a forehead to block it that much except maybe the ear, right? Other than that, there's nothing really that's going to block that light coming in, um, as opposed to the face, right? You have this rounded section of the face, obviously, where that's coming over will, will be in shadow. So the forehead will go almost all the way over before it starts transitioning into shadow instead. So all of this would be highlight. And then, you know, making sure this is tapered. Because we don't want a jarring like line here, just like we don't anywhere else. Now over here, we start getting into some shadow. This would be turned away. But it's a fine line between where that is and it's going to be right basically where the ear is. This is all probably still highlight. And then of course, you know, we have the ear coming in to play. All edges in shadow, but the side of the light source will have a little bit more highlight than uh, the back side once we really start getting into it. And then, right, all of this highlight. We're getting over there, though, towards the shadow. Again, underneath the eye in shadow, just like on the other side. But on, the other, on this side, right, we had that dip in the eye that had shadow on this side, that won't be the case because it's facing the light source, so all of this would be highlight. And then tapering into that dip in the eye. You look so mean when I first do it. The back side of the eye, going into shadow, because there's a dip. There's going to be highlight up until that point. Some of this, just deciding exactly. The white will be affected by whatever I, I do here too, so some of this is going to be, right, we have highlight up in here. So there's some transition happening in through here. In the eye. Um, the way that rodents like this, their eyes work, right? This is actually probably dipped down behind the eye, but as a predator, its face is um, 
forward facing, more forward set than prey animal. So there will be some highlighting over here on this cheek. I'm going to do the whole thing in shadow first. Um, as I've mentioned, I find that easier, but I will be adding highlight, even though I'm doing it all in shadow right now. And there'll be a transition point through here happening as well. Just like I said before, right? Like I'm giving myself a little bit of a runway to make that happen. And this is dropped down behind his muzzle, just like we have on the other side too. Now, this will also have a transition point. So some of what I'm doing will be in highlight, but again, giving myself a runway. And on this side, there'll be a little bit of highlight right under his nose, because his cheek is forward, so that's going to be picking up some light. So, yep, all of this just light pin pressure. Which doesn't take much. I found this to be, in both of these, an important transition. You know, if you get it wrong, people notice. And when I talk about tapering it in and something being too harsh, right, like this is a perfect example of that. Because this is a super harsh transition. <laughs> so, we want to taper that in, but... First things first, you... And I'm going to bring all the way over to where I've already highlighted that section. Now... We're going to fan it out, right? His, his face is probably a little bit forward, his cheek being what it is before it, it tapers off. And then same thing over here, there's probably just a smidge, not underneath, just on the, and then over here, just on that little ridge. And then bridging that. Want that to be nice and subtle. And tapered nicely. There's a just gonna brighten this up just a little bit because I'm gonna want this to be a little bit brighter than the drop that happens right behind it. Not as dark, but I want this to be a clear highlight. Now again, I've already drawn here, so I don't need to add a ton of pin pressure, I just need to add more lines. Well, I can add a little bit more pin pressure. That's not going to affect anything too crazy. So that's his nose. Almost. Okay. Now, I'm going to do a little bit through here as it drops down by the eye. Still fixing his nose here. Um, and then tapering it off. That gives us that nice sort of subtle transition. And then I'm going to do a little burst under the eye. Doesn't have to be anything big. Just a little bit, especially because it goes, right, it, it has that drop that happens immediately after. Sort of feathering that in. I don't want that to be harsh either. Looking kind of cute. Okay. Uh, we'll get back to the ears. For now, we're going to jump to the white. First of all, this section of white is going to be purely white. There's no shadows or highlights through here. It's just on his forehead. 
and it's okay to push the white into the brown. That'll help it look more uh, blended, more natural. So nothing blocking it right, so it's full pin pressure. And then, you know, if I need to, which I probably will, what I can do, I get it better up top, actually. All right, push this further down. And it starts blending the color. And I don't have to put full pin pressure for it because the white is so much wider. You can almost create like a haloed effect of the fur kind of blending. kind of see it makes that transition a lot less harsh. All right. Now again, all edges are in shadow. We're going to give a little bit of a burst on the chin. Don't have a lot of space to work with, so we're going to do the whole thing in shadow first. And then a little bit of highlight. Is not a lot. Not what I usually do because of how small we're, we're working with. Okay. Now we're going to do, you know, this in shadow. This is the edge of his face, right? So this would be in shadow because it's underneath. And then, of course, you know, all edges are in shadow, so that maintains as we bring it towards the side. And then bridging that gap. Having one or two fully brightened lines go all the way to the edge isn't necessarily a bad thing. Somebody's looking cute. Right through here is full pin pressure. Not to an edge, but right as we come this way, we have these long wispy hairs on the ear. Uh, some of the tips will be in shadow, so, well, it's long and wispy, so sometimes that can, you know, you don't have to show that as shadow. There's some wiggle room there. Um, I'm just going to draw it in shadow, and then I can add in highlights, because there will be highlights on it making sure it's big enough and then connecting it in with full pin pressure why does he look cute all right now we're gonna have some of this be highlight I'm swiping through all of it, and the reason for that is with the longer, wispier stroke, I'm not going to really like be worried about filling it all the way in. So it'll still create that illusion that there's some shadowing to it, because I'm not going to fill it in as strictly as I do um, elsewhere. There we go. I'm just going to create a little bit of a tapered. <laughs> and now the shadowed side. Again, there's going to be some highlighting through here. Some shadow. There's a transition that happens through the white, right? Because you can see the difference. So let's see, if I were to go ahead and make a call, this is clearly highlight. And then it tapers pretty quickly into shadow.
And we can mess up his hair too, especially where it's really fluffy here. Give it a little bit of an extra mess at the end after we add the whiskers. Probably gonna have to taper this a little bit. All right, obviously all through here, this would all be shadow. Just making sure it's blended nicely. Also, because the hair is coming up, I'm going to give a little bit of a burst to some of this. Like it's catching the light from where it's... Hair isn't, you know, especially the fluffier it is, isn't necessarily laying flat, so... Not many. It's just a few carefully chosen strokes. This I've already blended. Yeah. Now we have the ears, which is back to this tan color, and then the nose. Um, the gray or the, the black around the eyes, and then the eyes. The eyes look black, so we're probably only going to do the light flare on them. And I'm just getting in to get a color swatch for my We're going to go back to layer 10 and start adding it in. Back side of the ear, right over here in shadow, because facing away from the light source. Exception of this, because it's kind of fluffy, so we'll give that a little burst. And then all edges are in shadow. making the edges a little cleaner than they currently are as well. Doesn't take much. And you don't have to, you know, you don't have to do much. Again, with fur, you can have it a little bit jagged. But. All right. And then we'll fade it. I wonder if there's an edge, though. It's like a little edge over here. That comes up. That a little bit of a burst. We'll bring it down and start tapering that. Okay. Just sort of blending it in as we bring it down and then lessening up how many strokes there are. Not putting a lot of pin pressure. This is all kind of shadow. I'm gonna do a little bit of highlight later, but for now, I need this to come down and taper off. Ears would be rounding kind of in, and they have that short hair. Come all the way down here, even still, I'm lessening off how many strokes I have. All right, and now we really start backing off. You need to pre-plan, like you need to give yourself a long enough distance to make this look smooth. So I'm listening how many I'm putting, being meticulous, more meticulous on where I'm putting them. And just sort of tapering it in.
even if we bring these all the way down, it backs it off. You can see how much darker that is. Just like adding more lines creates um, a highlight. Without adding more pin pressure, you can add more lines to create a highlight. Backing off the lines without you know, changing how little pin pressure I'm putting makes a shadow. Um, and then I'm going to give, you know, I'm going to feather this in a little bit better. It's like a little burst. Okay, this is here. And then I'm going to get a little bit of burst over here too. It's potentially where light source might be catching just the edge, just that little bit. Give some dimensionality to his his ear. And then over here as well. Same thing for the other. Just bringing this down the same way. The shadowing is going to be a little reversed on it on the other side. And it's going to be more in shadow overall. which means I need to be mindful of how deep this is. This needs to be deeper. Let's highlight. All right, so we pull this down much the same way to a certain point and then start tapering it in. So this is a little higher than the other one. I'm going to start tapering it in now. So it's just less strokes. Making sure there's no hard line. And you can see that is darker. Perfect. Uh, there will be a little bit of highlighting right up here on the right side of the ear. That back side, not fully back, there's still that sh shadowing as it rounds away. But like there was a, a bulge here on this one, it's that one side catching instead of the underside catching. The back side catching. Likewise, Probably have a little bit of a highlight here where it is potentially catching because it's a rounded, you know, rounded ear. Not much. All right. So now we're going to get to the nose. Just kind of a little bit of a pinkish color. going to do um, the whole nose in shadow, right, so this backed off pin pressure, and then build up the highlights from there. Won't take much, it won't take long either. And that'll just give me the control I need. The nose is in a big space, which makes it both easier and harder. Sometimes if you have a very small section, you can't really do a lot to make it, you know, highlighted or shadowed correctly, like down in here. There's not a lot of room on that on that chin to really do it correctly. So you kind of work with the space you have. The nose is bigger than that, so we have a little bit of room, but. So I am going to leave this little gap so that it signals to myself that there's a gap there, that there's a recess. Uh, as I do highlights and shadows, I will be filling that in, but um, I know from experience, sometimes I forget that's there uh, when I do this, because I've just sort of filled it all the way in, and then I completely forget that there's this little dip in the nose. 
So in the interest of reminding myself, I just won't fill it in until I'm ready to fully fill it in. Now we have highlight all through here. Right, I don't have to put a ton of pin pressure. I'm putting a little bit, but um, extra lines will brighten it up. As you round down, that goes back into shadow. This is all in highlight. And then this will be catching a little bit. And of course, up in here is catching. Um, but this would be catching on that right light source coming from above into the right. You have the top nostril going into shadow, and the bottom would be catching just that little, just that little bit. All of this highlight, but going into shadow a bit as we taper this down. And then, you know, after we get towards the middle, we got to look at starting to taper it off across the nose as well. Going into shadow on this dip, uh, so there'll be highlight above it. Going into shadow on the dip itself, so backed off pin pressure. Catching the light on the other side, right? So we have that still coming down. And then starting to work through uh, pulling this more into shadow as we come over. Just sort of tapering it off. So backing off pin pressure, backing off lines, being just a little bit more meticulous with what I'm doing. More careful maybe is a better word. And the same for down in here. Make sure it's nice and faded down into it, not a weird transition. Okay, well, there we go. So um, he does have whiskers. Whiskers are pretty easy to do. I'm just debating, so the whiskers are black with a few in white. I'm debating on if I should do all of them in white so they show up or if I should do them in gray. Mm, let's do them in gray first. It'd be harder to see, but we can add some white in. I've certainly done that. So when you're doing whiskers, uh, moving your arm at the shoulder and making these kind of looping swipes, right? So it would it would be in this vicinity the whiskers are originating, and then you just kind of make a quick swipe, 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 allowing the pin pressure to pull away as you pull off from it, and then you know bunching them up, different lengths, different pin pressures. But you don't want a singular whisker out by itself, necessarily. Um, and then, especially in these guys, they do kind of come up and in front of their eyes. So don't be afraid to do that, right? And then, you know, bunching them down should bring them down. And then whatever you do on one side, right? So whatever I've done on this side, I need to mimic on this one. So I have a few coming down. So we'll have some of these coming down. Same thing, though. Moving at the shoulder. And as you come up, they kind of swipe up, right? Like you're you're doing this loop as you come up. I have one. I have a couple going through his eye, so I need a couple of those coming up. And then. Just sort of building it from there. If I make one side thicker, I need to mimic it on the other side. It's kind of long whiskers, and I'm really shortening them up, so I'm trying to be mindful and push it out further.
All right. Hmm. <laughs> See a couple of these come further down. Now I am, I have, right, there's this weird light pin pressure until the end and then it sort of dings, so I'm just going to raise it. Alrighty. Well, that shows up pretty good. Um, might mix in a couple of white. Especially down, down in here. Get like a couple of swipes of white in. It adds some variety to it as well. Okay. Now, um, the next thing we're going to do is mess up the hair right here. So that's relatively easy to do. Um, you're just going to take light pin pressure. I should also mention that the whiskers were not heavy pin pressure. It was kind of average pin pressure. I drag my, my whole arm across the tablet and then release that pressure at the shoulder. Um, so I'm moving all of that at the shoulder, including as I lift my hand up. I'm kind of shifting my position there. Um, now the hair up here, you know, this is a good way, especially if you have a long haired animal. Uh, but again, like the whiskers, this is light pin pressure. And what I'm going to do is these little light, quick strokes that are just going off the edge. Makes it look like it's a little bit messier. Kind of going in different directions, right? It doesn't have to stay straight. And bunching them up some places so it looks more natural. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Give it this nice long hair. Hair not, you know, following one line. Obviously, it's kind of going in different different ways. I'm going to push it all the way, all the way in, just like we did on this side. You can bunch that up as much as you want. Right, when you pull back, you get the sensation that this is longer, sort of messier hair, which makes sense. The white coming in would be the winter coat, so that hair would be thicker. And we can push probably a little bit down, just a little the nature of how that hair is coming down. And the whiskers kind of kick in so it won't be as big of a deal. Um, there we go. Now for the eyes. I'm going to put the eyes under the whiskers. So what we're going to do for the eyes is I'm actually going to take the lasso tool and I'm going to create kind of an inverted teardrop shape. Right? So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do this little like Inverted teardrop that kind of loops, although maybe a little better than that. <laughs> I want to kind of follow the contour of the eye, but still have a teardrop in it. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, although we'll be doing more to this side. And it's okay that this one's a little smaller. Um, and then we're going to go to edit and fill, already at white. So just the foreground color and hit OK. All right. And that's what we have. So just debating on if that's probably close enough. So what we're going to do down here on this one is we're going to mimic fur blocking some of that. And so we're going to do that by taking the lasso tool again, coming up and making these jagged lines like it's fur, right? And changing the sizes, making them nice and jagged. Coming up and then just erasing that. So you really get the impression that part of the eye is blocked by the fur coming around his face. Um, and then we might be able to, on this side, take a swipe through. Uh, debating the whiskers would kind of be on the wrong side. But there might be some, so we'll just take, we'll see how that looks. We'll take just a swipe like a whiskers going through it. Swipe. Technically a whisker is going through it.
Alright, so that is how you draw a long-tailed weasel. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.